This is Comic Picks by the Glick, and here's your host, Jason Glick. Yeah, that's right. Here I am. Okay, this week, yeah, it's like, for those of you who read my weekly, my um, bi-weekly posts about what comic books I review, you know, so I talked about um, The Goon, Volume 7, A Place of Heartache and Grief. A seri- a ta- it's a title that is far less emo, the title for a series is far less emo than the title would indicate. And, um, well, see, I figured, you know, I talked about the most recent volume, Volume 7, in the post, but, you know what, that would be a good time to talk about, you know, like, the other volumes in the series that Dark Horse has released, and Thank God they picked it up because God damn this series is a whole lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, because this because the goon is essentially is a series by Eric Powell who's got a um, sense of humor that and mindset that just works at, at perpendicular angles than than the rest the rest of us. I mean his his sense of humor and thoughts on how things work just just aren't normal. And and God bless him for that because <laughs> yeah, like, without that kind of thing like uh, er, like. Like everything would be would be just that much more dull in the r- real world. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In case the goon is basically about a character named the goon, big big ugly guy in, <coughs> in a 1930s style world, who basically goes around beating the crap out of the undead. Because you know, on one hand you got the goon who's representing like the human human interests of his town, and then you got got the zo- like the zombie priest. I was just going to ask, what is the undead? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, it's zombies. I mean, it's like, you got the zombie priest who's, who's basically running the other, all the undead rackets in town. And he's, and he, ideally, he'd, he'd like nothing more than just take over the town himself. But really, it's like, it's the goon who's standing in his way. And like, he's, how does he do it? He just goes and beats, beats the crap out of the zombies each time. And it's, it's good stuff. And like, and then you also got his buddy Frankie, who's just, guy, guy, right. I mean, like his, his signature line is knife to the eye. And it's, he's a big, big, wide-eyed, crazy guy who just talk, talks about some, some of the most insane, most insane stuff, like, like getting his own, like getting his own pony, just like talking about the girl who, who just like put a, who put a, um, baby clothes on a cat in order to convince that, convince her that he, that it was his kid. I mean, it's like, and he's just like a crazy psychopath, but you know, he's the goon's buddy because he stuck by him, he stuck by him once when he was in trouble, and now they're, they're in it together. But... I mean, the series is just like trades on some of the, on some like real, some really warped, crazy stuff. And you get you get the goon fighting um giant fishmen at the at the wharf and cutting their legs off. It's like ah, that's my that's my good dating arm. I'm not gonna get any good, good good women with without without my good dating arm. It's like and then you got yeah like talk let's see talking chainsaws, which even like Powell admits in the um. Volume Zero trade paperback, which collects his um, pre Dark Horse stuff. So he's like, yo, what were we thinking with a with a giant talking chainsaw? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. And then, so then you got the um, and then, well, you got like, then you got the uh, time that, that he and Frankie went to get this valuable coin collection from a from a ghost that um, let's see, like it's let's see that let me see that the ghost, especially a bunch of incestuous ghosts, because basically. This like the grandpa like, made his family stay in there, and then just did all sorts of strange things with them, and it was yeah, kind of scary. I mean, let's see if I can find the exact quote right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, you see the district, see the DeCaster patriarch, Mister Lionel DeCaster, wasn't known for being entirely sociable, decent, or sane. Mister DeCaster kept his wife, children, and grandchildren and prisoners in the mansion, never once letting them step foot outside. Constantly subjecting subjecting them to every depravity his sick mind could conduct, conduct. What's that you say? How do he have grandchildren if he never left his kid? If he never let his kids leave the house? Think about it, you twit. We're dealing with a real sick puppy here. So basically, got a bunch of incestuous ghosts, but um, like um, versus um go- versus the goon and Frankie, and while and while like Frankie um just gets the bad end of the crazy here, just um trying to make nice with a sandwich. The goon um, gets finds out that that um, let's see that cinnamon floss is the bane of all undead. Cinnamon floss. Cinnamon floss. Huh. Seriously, yeah. It's like she says, "Oh, petrified cat eyes strung strung on cinnamon dental floss." <laughs> yeah, so that's all. Like, if you're ever, hey, if you're in a in a bind with the with the ghosts and um, you need you need to take them out. Um, pe- Cat, cat eyes and cinnamon floss. That's all you're gonna need. Well, it's good I have cinnamon floss in my car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and from yeah, and it's 
it, it's just this gets crazier from there. From you know, from and let's see the first first real volume of the series, you get to see them kicking on like um send as evil evil elves like to di like eat digest everything they come across, like and the um, let's see and you get to see the zombie priest zombie priest trying to get um get this um bog creature trying to eat eat something's head. Let's see the goon facing off against an eight armed it's like eight. I guess like like a like a deadbeat eight armed spider, and and like while you get the um the undead undead who eat, eat the flesh get the undead who eat the flesh of the dead you get find a cannibal who face like a living cannibal who is created by the zombie priest in order to feast on the flesh of the living. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great it's good great warp stuff and I, as a as a testament to like how. how how big it's become! Like, even um, Mike Mike Mignola, creator of Hellboy, right. um, fit, um, decided to have them have Hellboy team up with team with the goon at one point. I mean, it's like it's it's funny because like, you see, because because like Hellboy is like he's just doing his thing, and then one point he just realized he winds up in the world world of the goon fighting a squid on a on a on a World War One era airplane. It's it's funny. It's uh -huh. And then, like, and as you see, like, like Hellboy, I mean, he's a fairly straight shooter. But then we get the uh, we toss him in the crazy, we toss him against the craziness of the goon, the goons' world. It just seems kind of mundane, actually. Like when like, you know, when Hellboy says like, you know, one time I was in Japan, and I, I was in this house, and there are all these guys with no heads, and the heads are off in the woods trying to eat me. So I took all the bodies and hid them in the lake. I mean, like, he says this to the guy to the goons' crew, and they think. Um, yeah, okay, that's, that's kind of normal, you know. <laughs> like, well, so what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they go out to fight, then they go out to fight squids, they, they go out to fight, fight squids with, um, balloons attached to them. Cool. So it's, 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 it's straight, great, strange stuff. But, see, the thing about the goon, though, is that recently, it's actually been hitting in more serious territory. Yeah, now, serious territory, uh, meaning that, like, it's... Like we're, we're trying to find out that you know, like the zombie priest is find, finds out that more serious consequences for his actions, and the goons find out that you know like things aren't going to be like the same. This is fine. Oh, me versus zombie priest is going to be versus like even more crazy thing, cra crazy and evil things that you know, actually probably going to stand chance of make killing me and killing everything else that I know. But because I mean, with with volume five, we, we get inclina inclinations. Things things do take a slightly more serious turn as Buzzard, the uh, the living guy who feeds on the flesh of the dead, um, winds up taking the fight to the zombie priest. Well, that fight turns out to be takes fights the zombie priest pretty well. The priest actually has his own things, his own plans of mind. He basically uses the unborn spawn of a, of a woman to um, be his new army against against the goon and Frankie, and it's. I guess taking taking this things this far, it just gets just gets even worse for the for the characters. I mean, and then things get to a head in Volume Six, Chinatown. Mm. Now, Chinatown only exists in hardcover so far, but it's basically um, a story because, like, as this, in the previous volumes, like they were in references to something something bad happened um, to the goon once before, and all we know is that it happened in Chinatown. And he doesn't want to go there. He doesn't want to talk about it anymore. So he, whenever Frankie brings it up, he just says, "You know what, Frankie? Yeah, I don't want to talk about that." It's like, <laughs> you know, you just don't talk about that anymore. In Chinatown, it's a, it, it's 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 an interesting story because it starts off with um, the very first page of the book basically says, "This ain't funny," <laughs> which is funny all by itself. And, and it, it's funny. Then you start reading this, mm. and then you realize that no, this is the last time the goon actually had. To be happy. I mean, he met this one girl, who was um, who was a prostitute in the service of the of the Chinatown um, of the Chinatown um, gangsters who mm -hmm. were, wanted access to the docks. Right. And it's like the goon sees this girl. I mean, oh, oh, she was one of the girls who worked at the at his carnival before he um, like before things went bad for him. And he when he got met up with her and she found and like he. He met met with her again. He arranged for her freedom. They went out for a while, and then she basically broke the news to him. No goon, I don't want to be with you anymore. It's like I just I just want to need my freedom, and then the goon just loses it. I mean, there's a great six like six page sequence in the graphic novel where it just shows 
which where you see Goon looking in the in the, in the mirror and he just he just completely loses it, mm. and it's, it's a great sequence. And then so you notice know, you see this and nothing's ever going to be the same for him. And then after that, then you learn out how he got his trademark scars, and it it ain't happy. I mean, it's very well done. And um, I'm looking at this and think, you know, but one of the reasons I like about the Goon is because it's so goddamn funny. Just like all the crazy, crazy funny stuff that he throws in each volume. Uh-huh. I mean, like, and then like to go serious like this. I mean, like, well, you know, that's kind of it's. It's not what you expect. Yeah, it's not what you'd expect. I mean, he's been building up to this. I mean, like, there's a, there's a term for this. Um, it's called the Cerebus Syndrome. Okay. Yeah, it's originally coined by a, by this um, guy, Eric Burns, who writes this um, webcomic site called WebSnark. Okay. Basically, it's a term for when a, ser- uh, a, sen- a sensibly comic series starts injecting dramatic elements in order to um, take it seriously to the next level. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's named for um, Dave, Dave Sims' Cerebus series, who started off as a, as a Conan parody, but then started, actually became a, a great read voice for um, social satire and parody. Well, b- well, that's before Dave Sim lost his mind and started hating women in every issue. <laughs> but that's another story. Okay. Anyway, that's that. Kind of, that really seems what the goon, what the goon is going towards here. But then you get to um, volume seven, a place of heartache and grief, part of what um, Dark Horse is calling the Goon Year, which is where because um, the series has been kind of published somewhat sporadically for for a while before that. But with this with this thing, this is basically um, it seems like it's Eric Powell doing the entire series executive for like for a year. And in order to get get this, in order to um, wrap the story of the zombie priest and the goon, ostensibly anyway, because um, volume seven, a place of heartache and grief, basically um, shows you, so finds things going really bad for the zombie priest as he as his boss as his um as the organization he's a part of sends one of its guys down there to um to basically say hey you know what you really suck at your job we're gonna um, bring in someone else. And this someone else appears to be um, Labrazio, the um, gangster who um, the goon killed and then assumed assumed his place in order to fake out the zombie priest. But with um, Volume Seven, though, I mean, it's it's still really goddamn funny. I mean, you see lots of lots of cre- things that I talk about in the post. I mean, you can see this, the goon um, like driving a chi- like driving his car through through one of the um, zombie priest's changelings. You see him dumping like like dumping a hip dumping a hillbilly into into the swamp, um, he it's like um, fighting a colossal transvestite, like beating the crap out of some girls, some vulture girls in the air. And it's it's funny because like you see because you find out that this that these these vulture girls were were supposed to have been destroyed after the goon smashed this um, this wizard's diamond. A while, she's back, but they find out that the um, that the that the um, diamond was you know the ruby. Sorry, my, my bad. The ruby was um was glued back together because hey, you know I didn't know you. The goon says yeah, I didn't know you could do that. He says no, they did. It's like now I'm back and being tormented. Well, that's too bad. You suck. So I'm gonna let you. So I'm gonna let you suffer anyway. But it's the um but volume seven like it works because I mean like, even though it's like it's 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 still taking the series in a much more serious direction. Uh-huh. It's still not losing sight of the of the great um twisted comedic sensibilities that that the series that has been the hallmark of the series. So even if we are going in a much more um, serious direction, mm-hmm. I'm willing to go along with it. If only because it's like I said, it's, it's, it's not losing sight of what, of what made the series great in the first place. I mean, like right. it's also noteworthy because, because even as serious as the series, as this volume gets, it still ends with, um, a, uh, like a four page segment on peaches, Valentine, mm-hmm. Uh, Peaches Valentine is a character who was mostly known for just like playing with his own shit, mm-hmm. and um, you find out that it's it's because you the segment is called Peaches Valentine in in all hail the Oprah because it's basically Powell taking issue with um, Oprah's um, promotion of the secret, and then you eventually find out that oh Peaches Valentine has been hiding in Oprah's swelled head all this time, <laughs> and um, it's. It's it's just just sick. I mean, it's like you just found that this this shit, this this thing who likes playing with his own shit is hiding out in Oprah's head, making her think these things, and oh uh, boy. And wait, just just out of curiosity, does does she lose it after that? Well, you see, like her what head explodes. Exp- Oprah. You I'm see, oh, well, her head explodes, <laughs> and um, then you that's when you realize that Peaches Valentine has been hiding and hiding it all this 
all this time. the whole reason why she is the way she is. So. Yes. <laughs> and... Nice hit. Yeah, it's it's great stuff. So like, it's like yeah, it's even though it's like it's like even though the series is, is getting more serious, it's still not losing sight of its of what it was originally here for, which is to provide just like great, great twist, like great twisted humor at the expense of, expense of the undead and those who deserve it. Mm-hmm. So overall, all let's see, like well, technically eight volumes if you count volume zero, okay. are well worth buying. And yeah, even though like volume volume six Chinatown is still on hardcover. That's still, that's still well, well worth it as well, gotcha. even even if it isn't funny. <laughs> yeah. So, know, like to be honest, with you, this is probably more suited for Halloween stuff. But hey, you know what? I still would say go out and buy go out and buy all all the volumes like as soon as you can because it's 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 great stuff. Yeah, sure. Well, okay. Yeah. All right. And on that note, call it a night. We'll see you next week. All right. See you later, guys. Mm-hmm.